want a hierarchical array. So in hierarchical clustering what I will do is I will start off with and there are many ways in which to do this right. So one way to do this is to say that I will start off with each data point being a cluster of its own right. Each data point is a cluster of its own and then what do I do? I try to merge them into larger clusters right. Each data oh this is not a spatial distribution of data points okay I just put these things here as I mean individual clusters right data points are individual clusters then what I do is I compare distances between the data points and say maybe merge them merge these merge these merge these right. So when I draw a line like this that means these two have been merged right and likewise these two are merged and then the third data point was merged with that and then these two got merged right. So how could these things look like? Yeah, that's what. So I have not told you what the data points are, right? So we'll call them. I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So initially start looking at this say okay 1 and 2 are close together let us merge them right 3 and 4 are close together let us merge them 5 and 6 or 6 and 7 are close together let us merge them. So after I have done these things okay next thing I look at okay 5 is close to 3 and 4 okay let me merge them and so on and so forth right and next what would you want to merge which looks closer. that should bring you to the question how do you measure distance between clusters you know how to measure distance between data points and right? how do you measure distances between clusters even how do you know that 5 is close to 3 and 4 <coughs> you could do variety of things right so there are many different uh, 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 measures that you could use right so in this case uh, so the one thing is the So centroid based sometimes other other thing that people use is called single link distance. So you know what a single link distance is? So I look at two clusters, I look at the pairwise distance of taking one point from this cluster, another point from that cluster, right. So I look at all possible pairs, right. I look at the closest such pair. I look at the closest such pair and then I use that as my distance between the two clusters. Because the points are not equal then? What do you mean by not equal? You saying one point in here, one point in there. Every possible pair. So if there are 5 here, 2 here, I do 10 pairs, okay. So you said why not just take the average? Why not the max? Who? Huh? Why not the? You could. So what do you think that is called? <laughs> so that is another distance we should call average link clustering okay. So the single link clustering, single link clustering essentially takes the closest data points right. So if you take the closest data points here, so which is closer, now I already merged this right. So this is one cluster now, that is another cluster, that is another cluster. So which is closer, these two are closer or these two are closer? The question now boils down to is 1 closer to 3 than 4 to 6. From here it is not very clear to me but I will take your word for it okay. So now that is basically done, so all the data points are merged at this point. Right, so I did 4 and uh, 6 because they were, so that is single link right. So more, I mean single link is by far the most popular hierarchical clustering distance measure right and then there is another one called so what do you think complete link would mean? 
Huh? Not summation. Farthest max. So I look at pairwise distances, and the max of these pairwise distances is assigned as the distance between the two clusters. So in single link clustering, so distance between these two clusters was given by the distance between one and three, and the distance between these two clusters was given by the distance between four and six. Right, that is single link clustering. Right? In complete link clustering, the distance between these two will be given by two and five or one and five. Well, okay, whatever, two and five, and the distance between these two will be given by seven and five. Right? So, which you think is larger? My God, it's hard to make it. Hard to make. Huh? Two and five is smaller, is it? I'll make it easier for us. There you go. Yeah. So, two and five is <laughs> two and five is smaller than seven and five. Right? So, if I'm doing complete link clustering, then I would have merged these first, right? And then I would have merged. So, I could do a centroid based distance, I could do single link, complete link, I could do average link, anything else you can think of? Yeah, so I could do <laughs> radius based. So, what do I do in that is that, so I will take the two clusters, I want to find the distance between these two clusters, I essentially merge the two clusters and find their radius. If you want to find the distance between these two clusters, I will merge these two clusters and find their radius. So, the smaller the radius, the closer the two clusters are. So, what is the centroid actually implied? No, no, centroid I am looking at the distance of the centroids of the two, right here I am merging the two and then finding the centroid of the merged cluster. So, it is different, right. And I can similarly, I can do the, can do a diameter, I can merge the two clusters take the diameter. So, the smaller of the two is the better. So, these are essentially more useful for comparison purposes, right. I want to know whether cluster 1 is closer to cluster 2 or to cluster 3, then I can merge the two, find the diameter and then uh, make a decision, right. It is not really a true distance measure uh, in the sense that I cannot uh, what may say what is the distance of cluster 1 from cluster 2, okay, diameter does not make sense. Right, but then if you want to say is cluster 1 closer to cluster 2 than to cluster 3, then I can use the merge diameter and I can make make those decisions. Okay. So, all of these are valid ways of doing hierarchical clustering. Yeah. Uh, you could I mean define whatever you want, right. So, these are popular ones Yeah, and uh, yeah, you, they do use uh, uh, other distance measures as well for doing hierarchical clustering, right. Okay, so, what is the, the nice thing about hierarchical clustering? Once I choose this distance measure, right? So, think one one minute, just stop and think, right? So, these are meta distance measures, right? I still need to decide on a point wise distance measure, right? So, that could be an Euclidean measure. So, when I say single link, I said the distance between the two closest points, right? But what is that distance? That could be Euclidean, that could be. Um, um, Jacquard similarity that could be whatever you want, absolute deviation, whatever, right? You can look at whatever distance measures you want. Uh, so, that uh, still have another distance measure, right? So, that is dependent on the data type, right? That distance measure typically depends on the data type. Well, this distance measure typically depends on the kind of clustering that you are looking at, right? So, once I have a tree like this, right? What you did not have to choose here? K. K. I did not have to choose K here. So, once I have a tree like this, how do I dis recover clusters? If you think about it, when I completed my clustering, all I was left with was Single. one cluster, right. How do I recover the cluster? Hmm? Traverse the tree, how would you traverse the tree? No, I mean if I, if I start here, I have a single cluster. If I come here, I have individual data points. Yeah, so I basically have to figure out some point. Okay, I'll break here. So if I break here, how many clusters do I end up with? Three, Three clusters. If I break here, how many clusters I end up with? Two. Okay, I can choose to break at some point in between, and then say that I'll take that many clusters I get. Right? How do you choose which point to break it at? 
I can do the knee, knee method again, right? So I can do a K versus evaluation, and I can get this done. So what is the advantage of doing uh, uh, hierarchical clustering? Is I get that entire graph generated to me in one go, right? So I'm not actually having to rerun everything for different choices of K. I get the entire uh, K graph, that knee graph, generated for me in one one shot. Okay. So how are you sure that you get all the You don't. You don't. You don't. You, you, well, yeah. You don't. Uh, so as many as you can get. See, the point is the ones that you don't get are the ones where it was very hard for you to find a breaking point, right? So essentially, if you choose a threshold at which you are merging the points, right? So all these things get merged. Right? There is no no real reason for you to choose three over seven or something like that. If you don't get anything four, five, six in between, so after three you move to seven. So really didn't make any difference to look at four, five, six. Usually that's what will end up. In, right? uh, great. Right. So depending on what kind of measure you choose, uh, you end up with different kinds of clusters. For example, if you choose single link, right? So what does single link say? That the close the distance between two clusters is the closest data points, right? So I could have a cluster that is like that, another cluster that is like that. And another cluster that is like this, okay. Which 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 are the uh, okay? So which are the two you should merge now? Uh -huh. Well, give me names, give me numbers. One, two. So for you single link clustering, I will merge 1 and 2, right. If you use single link, I will merge 1 and 2. So I will basically get this humongous very long cluster, right. So that is the problem with single link clustering. I may end up with very long clusters. Essentially, the points at one end of the cluster to the other end might not be very related at all, right. That is the problem with single link clustering, yeah. right. On the other hand, if I had used complete link clustering, I would have merged uh, 2 and 3 first. Right, and then I would have merged it with one. But if I use complete link clustering, it's highly unlikely that I would have actually produced such elongated clusters as one and two in the first place. Right, single link clustering tends to produce very tight, small clusters. Right, and uh, at some point you then merge a lot of clusters, but then uh, you'll merge them at very high levels in the tree. Right, at the lower levels in the tree, you'll be getting smaller uh, clusters. Okay. Ah, huh, where is the tree here? That thing, that figure I drew there is a tree. Okay, but it is not called a tree in the hierarchical clustering literature. It's called something else. Huh? Dendrogram. You know what a dendrogram means? Huh? It's a tree. Yeah. Dendrogram means tree, just that they went to a different language and pulled out the pulled out a tree, okay. So dendrogram is, tr is a tree, right. So that is a that is a dendrogram, right. And what are these levels I am talking about there? Huh? Not, oh, not really iterations, they are the levels at distances at which I merged, right. So when I merged 1 and 2, right, so I had some threshold, right. I start off with 1. I say anything that is within 0.1 distance unit of it, I'll merge into a cluster. That is nothing, right? It stays as one. Right? Then I say, okay, within 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Now it's 0.4. Great. So now I have two. So at a level of 0 0.4, I have merged one and two, and also it turns out that level of 0.4, I merge seven and six, and three and four. Right? That's why. Uh, well, this all all of this should be at the same level, right? But you can think of this being slightly different because. 3 and 4 is or slightly farther apart than 1 and 2, right. So this, this, these levels are essentially the distances at which you are merging them, right. So that is why 5 gets merged with 3 and 4 at a higher level because 5 is slightly farther away from 4 than 3 is, right. So that is that's the, that's the reason for the levels and then these two get merged at a higher level because they are farther away. So the levels in the tree at which you merge are essentially the distances right at which you are doing the merging. Okay.